Yeah, the hate, the grind, the sweat, the blood, the time, my motivation. I work too hard, too long, and I be in the conversation. My team been up, way up, ain't nothing less than domination. I got the game and say what I can get in combination. Motivation, all this money on my mind, that's my motivation. You be talking, but you not up in the conversation. They all wanting me to stop, that's my motivation. Yeah, my motivation. Yeah, motivation. Yeah, my motivation. On the final day of the regular season, the Marion Knights find themselves one win away from just the second perfect conference season in program history. But standing in the way is longtime rival Indiana Wesleyan, who is looking to share the conference crown with Marion for the second straight season. It's Indiana Wesleyan and Marion, two of the top four women's teams in NAIA basketball this afternoon on the ISC Sports Network. We welcome you into the PE Center on the campus of Marion University. Good crowd filing in. Rob Brown alongside Jim Leisure, happy to bring you this one. Number two against number four, the only top five women's college basketball matchup played in this country in any division. And Jim, you and I have the pleasure of bringing it to everyone and can't wait to call this one today. Yeah, again, the, the pleasure and honestly just the good fortune. Uh, this is going to be a great basketball game, again, against two great teams. You see the records there. Just one loss separates them. Uh, and again, very competitive game today. Well, we saw the records there. Indiana Wesleyan, two losses. One of those two losses came at the hands of Marion. As Marion went up to Wesleyan and won 73-54 back on January 20th, we mentioned Marion looking for just its second perfect conference season. The Knights come in 17-0 in Crossroads League play. Indiana Wesleyan 16-1. Jim, quickly, what do you look for as keys for today? 
Well, again, if, if you are Marion, you just got to play your game. Try not to get untracked. Of course, now again, Indiana Wesley and Coach Whaley and his staff have had a couple weeks here to watch that film. They're going to make a lot of defensive adjustments. So the key, like always, protect the basketball. You can't give the basketball away. Limit the turnovers. Play your game. Get the, get the ball into the hands of your shot makers. Indiana Wesleyan and Marion both coming off walkaway wins. Marion winning by 30 on the road Wednesday night at Mount Vernon Nazarene to clinch at least a tie for the conference title. Wesleyan winning in its home finale regular season-wise, 86-53 over Goshen. It's Marion and Indiana Wesleyan in the regular season finale, number two, hosting number four in NAIA women's college basketball. We'll step out for the national anthem, come back. We'll have the starters and the tip from the PE Center on the west side of Indianapolis. It's Marion women's basketball, and it's next on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now well, back at the PE Center on the campus of Marion University, let's go down to the public address and get the starting lineup for the visitors from Indiana Westland. First for the Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan University. At forward number zero, Jay Nutley. At guard number 21, Taylor Fokema. At forward number 23, Jordan Reed. At guard number 24, Claire Merrill. At guard number 32, Lily Frazier. For the Wildcats head coach in his seventh season, Ethan Whaley. Ladies and gentlemen, starting lineups for the Indiana Wesleyan University Wildcats. Well, Jim, the uh, standout in that group, certainly Lily Frazier, the 5'10 junior out of Winnemac, Indiana, leads the team in all three categories, scoring, rebounding, and assists. Leading scorer in the Crossroads League at 19.2 points per game. Certainly she's top of the scouting report as uh, Marion gets ready for this contest. Yeah, and, you know, but the one thing about it is that they've also got three other girls that can score the ball. Uh, averaging over 10 points or more. So if you, you know, if Marion does find a way to shut her down or limit her, there's three other people that can beat you. And Indiana Wesleyan tops in the league in scoring at just under 83 points per game. Let's go back to the public address for the Marion starters. Wild number 11, Abby McNally. 
at forward, a 5'11 senior from Indianapolis, Indiana, number 42, Kennedy Gerard. At guard, a 5'7 senior from Kosice, Slovakia, number 22, Sada Mayorosheva. At guard, a 5'7 senior from Brownsburg, Indiana, number 25, Allison Bossy. Rounding out your night starting lineup is a six foot senior guard out of Danville, Indiana, wearing number 13, Ella Collier. Your night's head coach in his third season, Steve Brooks. Ladies and gentlemen, starting lineup for your Marion University Knights. Well, Ella Collier, the leading scorer for the Knights, right behind Frazier, second in the league in scoring at just over 19 a game. Interesting, the, the two head coaches, you get a look at Steve Brooks in his third year at Marion. Steve Brooks won two national titles, NAIA national titles, at Indiana Wesleyan in 2007 and 2013. Ethan Whaley on the opposite bench in his sixth year at Indiana Wesleyan. Our officials today, Tim Cartwright's the crew chief, working alongside Ryan Kent Jr. and Justin Jackson. Marion University in the home grays with the gold numerals trimmed in and lettering trimmed in navy. Indiana Wesleyan in the road blacks with the red lettering and numerals trimmed in white and gray. We're set to go, glad you're with us. Back tap controlled by the Knights. Each team working away from its respective benches in this first half. I always like to see defensively what a team opens up in. Looks like a man, but it's kind of a matchup as well. Collier drove right into a triple team, and Fulcum had tied her up with assistance of a couple teammates. Looked like she was looking for some cutters. You know, when you're double and triple team, that means somebody's open. Somebody's got to go to the rim or at least go to the ball. Knights turn it over on their first trip, as do the Wildcats. So the teams trade turnovers. Marion gets it back. Both these teams average about 12 or 13 turnovers a game. McAnally in deep. The jump hook is up and in. Knights on the board first. Good job of getting positioning down low on the block, receiving the pass, and then just kind of using her off arm to clear space. A little baby hook shot. Volkema, who began her career in the conference at Spring Arbor, throws in a little scoop shot. Wow, very impressive. Nice job as uh, Wesley's going to come out with a little three-quarter court trapping press here. But nice body control, nice finish there with the finger roll. Mayora Shova on the baseline with pump fake to get Reed off her feet. Now McNally splits the defenders and scores again. A good job again of getting the ball where they want it. Reed in the baseline. Veteran forward out of New Pal missed the short jumper. Girard with her first rebound of the game. Gerard skips away from Nutley and the shot spun off after a lap of the rim. Quick hit ahead to Fulkema. Fakes Gerard off her feet and draws the first foul of the game. Now, Rob, we've already seen it on both ends of the floor. Really good shot fakes. You know, people are getting the basketball. They're in, a, in an attack position. You're going to see the shot fake, get the defender up, create the contact, and just couldn't finish, but she's going to go to the line for two. Taylor Fulkema out of Sand Lake, Michigan. I looked that up in case you asked me where that was. It's about a half an hour north of Grand Rapids, town of 500 people. Wow. A little bitty old town. Tied at four. He's one of the few uh, ladies here today that aren't from Indiana. There's a handful of them. Mitchell, she started a career at Spring Arbor up in Michigan in this league. Spring Arbor in third place in the conference. Knights steal it back. Fresh clock. Tied at four. 
McNally Nutley turned her away at the block and a tie up keeps it at the night's end. Yeah, an example here, you're gonna see getting the ball in, in really a bad spot because she's under the basket. You wanna try to get her out over there on the block where she has something to do with it. And then you're just gonna see, might've been a little bit of a foul there, a little contact. Call your stop and go move into traffic and draws the foul. Does Collier. Again, you're going to see a lot of arms and legs in here. And there's the foul. That's Frazier who takes it. Ella Collier shooting two. First one up and in. Ella Collier leading the nation in free throw percentage, 98%. And we're not talking small sample size theater here. Collier coming in 117 out of 120 from the foul line. Yeah, I saw that, and again, I had to make sure it wasn't a typo. I did the same thing you did. <laughs> yeah, double like, check. Yeah, I double check. Like, okay, what she do? Like three of you know, or two of three or something? No, <laughs> that's big time. Yeah. Welcome. I got it back. Nutley can shoot it from out there and missed it long, but Frazier's got the long side rebound and a tie up will keep it. At the Wesleyan end, first subs into the game come from the visitors. Well, Frazier got the offensive board in a great spot. She just kind of hesitated a little bit and brought the ball down and allowed it to get tied up. Izzy Reed is on, the 5'8 junior from Greenwood. Oh, she threw the inbounds pass off the back of Collier. Did Reed and laid it in. That's, uh, if, if it's not the oldest trick in the book, it's on the short list. <laughs> And Reed's tied the game. Some craftiness from Reed just into the game. Ties it at six. Just game awareness there. You know, defensively, you can't really, you got to turn your back, but you can't, you got to have a corner of your eye. Parker just into the game, caught on a mismatch in the block. Marion has the Wildcats in the scramble, and Mayor Shova makes them pay with the three. Well, you said it, Rob, just good ball movement there led to an easy shot. And the Wildcats turn it over. So far, Indiana Wesleyan's not really seen, as you see Coach Brooks there kind of coaching up the official. Uh, but yeah, has not seen much out of this press. We'll see if they can get something out of it. You want to get the ball to the middle of the floor, give yourself a three-way go, and of course, get it across the timeline. Bossy, long two, got it. First two for Allison Bossy, and the Knights' lead is five. Frazier looking for her first two. Up and under draws the foul. Mayor Shova does not think so. Yeah, Coach Brooks doesn't either. Kind of a late call there. Maddie Lawrence steps in, the six foot senior out of Winchester, Indiana. Already the third sub into the game for the Wildcats. Lily Frazier shoots two. North Judson High School in Northern Indiana. First in the league in scoring at 19.2 a game and seventh in the league in rebounding, just under seven a game. Both free throws good, 11-9, eight to score, Knights up three. Collier cut off on the baseline by Parker, tries it again. Pass across the paint to Gerard, and Gerard fouled on the catch by Reed. Now just a little bit late, rotating down defensively, and a good call, easy call by the official. Gerard finds McNally on the back cut. Good bounce across the lane to Collier who lays it in. Well, it wasn't pretty, Rob, but it worked. Again, they, they got what they wanted. It was a little more convoluted than probably they drew it up. Good Frazier. spacing. Good cuts. Jordan Reed in the corner finds Frazier. Reed gets it back, spins. Wildly lost the handle, no deflection on the shot, and the Knights get it back. 
Yeah, really good defensive pressure here, and I didn't know if she got a piece of it or not. And yeah, Myra Schopen just went straight up. Forced Reed into a tough angle there. Wildcats still with the trapping pressure. Still really yet to get much out of it. Trying to pin the ball on the sideline of the Wildcats. Gerard turning face, attacks Lawrence on the baseline, left it short, got her own, and finds the putback on the bottom. Seven point Knights lead. Really good job of just going baseline defensively. You got to take that away. There's no way, none. Can't let him go baseline. Frazier finds Lawrence out of a double, and Lawrence drills the triple. 26 three pointer of the year for Maddie Lawrence. That chops the Knights lead down to four. Knights have led by as much as seven. Hit ahead of McNally. Jump hook short. Lawrence has the rebound. Side four minutes to go. Lawrence with the hesitation move. Left for Reed trailing. Lawrence tries another one. That went way short. Nick the rim and out of bounds. And one of the things that the press has done is, again, uh, Coach Whaley's not really gotten it, the, the defensive, uh, the turnovers, the bad passes, the hurried pass that they've been looking for now. They're going to stay in, it looks like here. Uh, but uh, it's led to some really wide open cut lanes for Marion. Call your cutoff. And Bossy looking in deep for McNally. Over to Collier, open three on the spot up, got it. Already seven points for the all-time leading scorer in Marion women's basketball history and the lead back to seven. Both these teams really just doing a great job with spacing and just getting good looks. Forcing the defense to move. Jasmine Griffin into the game, handling the basketball for the first time. 5'8 freshman out of Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Good attack to the rim and finish with the left hand by Folkema. Folkema with a team high six for the Wildcats. A little equipment issue there, but I'll tell you what, she, does, she likes to drive, she likes to slash. So you're gonna have to give some help side defense on her. Because uh, again, that seems to be a big part of her game. Claire Merrill is back in. And yeah, Wesleyan has already played four off the bench. Merrill pokes it free out of bounds. Knights only have five seconds to get it across the timeline after that deflection. You've got to be aware of that. Poked out of bounds again. Now just four seconds to get it over. And Collier inbounding on the near sideline. Good pressure there by Claire Merrill. Collier loops a pass into the forecourt that's easily stolen by Lawrence. Reed hoists a three. Izzy Reed finds the bottom. Five points off the bench for Izzy Reed. And what was once a seven-point night's lead just moments ago is now down to two. Well, again, finally seeing some hay from that, uh, that full-court pressure led to a turnover and a big three on the other end. Mayor Shova left alone. Three kicks up and off the rim. Almost a friendly home court roll, but Reed brings it the other way. Izzy Reed. Two Reeds on the Indiana Wesleyan roster. Different spelling, no relation. Griffin drives in the lane, missed the shot. But drew the foul and shoots it twice. Collier's foul, her first and the team's third. The first Marion substitute enters the fray. That's Tamiya Perryman, the 5'8 redshirt junior out of Fishers. Mayor Shoba has a seat for the Knights. Jasmine Griffin, the freshman left-hander, shoots two. First one skips in. Mentioned Griffin out of Ephrata, Pennsylvania. And that was good as well. That's halfway between Lancaster and Reading, in case you were wondering. I'm giving geography lessons yeah. today as well. Trying to educate the people a little bit today. 
Jordan Reed. The other Reed is from New Palestine, Indiana, yes. just south and east of Indy. Aaliyah Evans also into the game for Marion out of Westport, Indiana, and Green Greensburg High School. Bossy for three, long. 7-0, Indiana Wesleyan run. And the Wildcats can grab the lead with a hoop here. Inside, 100 seconds to go, first quarter. Nutley's back into the game, lost the handle, scramble on the deck. The Knights force a tie-up and a turnover. Fourth Indiana Wesleyan turnover. Now you're going to see it here again. The ball just tipped away right there, and then that leads to the mad scramble. And I think that's our fourth held ball as well. So fourth turnover on Indiana Wesleyan. Ten bench points coming from Indiana Wesley in a story in this first quarter. Each team shooting over 55% from the floor and over 50% at 50% from the three-point line. McNally got in under the rim, couldn't find the angle. The Wildcats come the other way, again with a chance to grab their first lead of the game. Nutley draws a foul at the rim. Steve Brooks vehemently disagrees. Let's take a look. Well, she clearly wasn't set, and uh, they go. Uh, you know, they went on Bossy there. I think that's a good call. Bossy's foul, her first, and Nutley misses the first free throw. Jade Nutley out of Madison, Indiana. Seventy-nine percent normally. First team All Crossroads League selection last year. It's the second free throw, and the Wildcats have their first lead of the game. Both so these teams come into the game shooting about 80% from the line, give or take. 8-0, Indiana Wesleyan run. Evans' is runner off the back of the rim, too strong. Rebound, jab out of bounds by the Wildcats. Partial reset, keeps it at the Marion end. 20 seconds to shoot, 54 and 8 tenths left in the first quarter. Quick inbound to Bossy, trying to attack. Forced out to the arc, killed the dribble, needs help. Finds it in Perryman. Perryman might have gotten away with a shuffle, forced a tough shot, and drew a foul. Bailed out on the foul. I'm not sure Perryman had an angle to shoot that basketball. Yeah, Merrill was just being a little too aggressive. I mean, she was doing a fantastic job. Great effort, but you saw her body kept coming forward and leaning, leaning, leaning until they finally, the referee just had enough of it. Tamia Perryman shoots two. First one kicks up and in. Perryman averaging seven points off the bench. Fishers High School up on the northeast side of Indianapolis. Second one too strong. We have a lane violation, however, on Lily Frazier, I believe. So that will give Perryman another opportunity to put the Knights in front. Well, trying to get in there and, and you know block out the shooter a little bit early. That's good. And Marion regains the lead. 2019 the score. Merrill, corner three, kicks short. Perryman one-hands the rebound on the push. With Folkema on her hip. Shot clock three seconds ahead of the game clock as the first quarter winds down. McAnally cuts in deep, double. Swings it out to Collier for a right side three. Got it. Had all day to look at it, Rob, and that's just killer stuff right there. Collier, second three of the game. Ella already with ten points. Nutley a three to beat the clock, and she throws it in. Oh, my. Collier heave to try and beat the horn and can't do it. Now, this first quarter lived up to what we anticipated. 23-22 our score at the end of one. The Knights on top. More to come from the PE Center next. Second quarter around the bend. You're watching Marion Knights basketball on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's 
not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Well, Ella Collier's 10 points leading the way for the night to lead this one by one as we head to the second quarter. Rob Brown, Jim Leisure with you. That first quarter, five ties, two lead changes in the first quarter. Knights led by as much as seven points. Wesleyan leading by as much as one. Wesleyan with the basketball to start the second quarter. And this crowd is still trickling in, Rob. Really nice crowd for these ladies today as well it should be. Merrill, corner three to get the second quarter started. Fulcoma with the offensive rebound. Nutley dribbled a little too much and tied up. And that'll be another turnover for Indiana Wesleyan. Unfortunate there for uh, Wesleyan because again, you get the offensive board, you get an opportunity for some second chance points and then you just turn it over on a, on a held ball. Set the lineups for you. Collier, Evans, Perryman, Bossy, and Abby McNally out there for the Knights. Merrill Reed, Jordan Reed, I should say. Fulcoma, Nutley, and Frazier on the floor for Indiana Wesleyan. Perryman pull up, 12-footer, high arcer, spins off. McAnally with a nice back tap out to Collier. Three is wide right. Oh, my. Nice job of keeping it alive, though. Again, opportunities. Fulcoma. Knights into the open spot. Tried that scoop shot that she scored on the first quarter, but couldn't find the angle. Evans with a great hit ahead to Collier, who finishes. What a pass by Evans. Good job of looking down. Look down the floor. There's somebody open. Somebody's cutting. Get him the ball. Frazier elbow jumper is short. McNally grabs another rebound. Evans stop and go move on the baseline. Finds Perryman. Perryman with a hook pass to McNally. But out of bounds. Yeah, she probably just should have went on in there. It's a great job. Uh, broke the defender down off the dribble, the crossover. And honestly, she tried that extra pass. And, you know, it's, it's great that she's not being selfish, but she probably should have just went to the rim and finished. That pass had a little heat on it yeah, it, as it well. Yeah, it did. 25-22. Our score. Fulcoma spins baseline, and Bossy takes it away. Evans had her pass deflected. Jordan Reed, former Crossroads League all-defensive team player, got a deflection. Frazier still trying to get on track. Nutley tries a three. Hit one in the final seconds of the quarter. Frazier's got an offensive rebound, put it up and in and drew the foul. Well, we mentioned Lily Frazier yet to get a field goal and as soon as we say Frazier trying to get on track, Frazier finds a bucket and a chance for a three-point play. Got to love those offensive rebounds, man. They're just, they lead to buckets as this one does. And again, good job of just body control and really, I think, anticipating the contact and fighting right through it. Nice job. And that's the second foul on Ella, Ella Collier. So that's a bit of a concern for the Knights. Frazier completes the three-point play and that ties the game at 25. Bossy swings back to Perryman. Collier stays in right now with two fouls. And Collier fouled on the drive. Ethan Whaley is a little incredulous at that call. 
Partial shot clock reset for the Knights to 20. Now he rolls to the basket. Knights move the basketball. Evans three is off the front of the rim and Jordan Reed with the traffic rebound pushes the other way. Pull up in the lane is in the bottom and spins out. Yes, she had the right idea. I like the shot, the little post up, little 10 foot jumper just didn't go. Perryman takes Reed to the elbow. Fades and shoots. That's Perryman's shot right there. Now that hard pull-up dribble into the elbow either side, and Tamiya Perryman with four. Nutley spins right into Perryman, and Perryman draws the offensive foul. So Perryman makes a play at either end. Oh, you're going to see just a little bit of a hook right there. It's kind of a wing. It's going to shove off there. Fairman's have been involved in some really nice plays already. Obviously, the ball needs to go through her uh, offensively, really, and then even to a certain degree defensively, you want to have her around the ball if you're married. High energy level player is Perryman. McNally backs Nutley down and puts it in off the board. Well, this is kind of the way the first quarter started, Rob, and that Marion went on a little bit of a run, and then it was answered by Indiana Wesley. Let's see if they got something. Frazier picked up the dribble, but able to pivot her way into some space and finds the bucket. Five so, in the quarter for Frazier. Yeah, she had the ball there in the lane for quite a while, so somebody's got to come over and help. Evans' errant pass out of bounds. Knights turn it over. Maddie Lawrence returns for the Wildcats. That is turnover number six for the Knights. Marion's lead is nine, is two rather. Frazier attacks the baseline quickly. Bossy got a piece of the shot, but Frazier, the second offensive rebound for her in the quarter that she converts into a bucket. Seven in the quarter for Frazier, and we're tied at 29. Ball stolen by Riley Parker. Parker back into the contest. Pull up for Frazier, short. And Lawrence fouling McNally on the rebound. Lawrence foul her first and the team second. Sara Mayor Shova comes back into the game for the Knights. Mayor Shova handling the point guard chores. Perryman cross court skip, red and stolen by Jordan Reed. But Red is exactly right. She's like a free safety there. She read the eyes. Lawrence trailing three is short, and Mayora Shova will watch it go off the end line. Nice heady play there. Sara realized, you know, the ball's off the rim, and if I can kind of block out a little bit and keep the, uh, and the Indiana Wesleyan player away, the ball will roll harmlessly out of bounds, and it'll be uh, night basketball. Taylor Fulcom is back in for the Wildcats. Halfway through the second quarter, tied at 29. Wildcats showing that half-court trap that's at times caused the Knights some problems. Parker takes the foul. Parker's first, team's third. Kennedy Gerard returns for the Knights. Allison Bossy checks out. And you talk about that pressure again. If you're Marion, you want to catch the basketball and you want to do something with it as quickly as you can. Drive, pass, move it. Because if you hold it, you're going to get trapped. Perriman, great pass into McNally who scores. 
McNally with eight. Perryman making things happen in her time on the floor. Frazier played by Collier this time down. Too strong off the board, McNally clears. Mayor Shova gets it back from Perryman. Thought about a three. McNally almost threw it in against the double team, but it spun out. Steve Brooks wanted a foul. Meanwhile, Parker tries a three that's no good. And Gerard clears. Gerard posting on Frazier. Tried to find a cutting McNally, and it's knocked out of bounds. Stays with the Knights. Jasmine Griffin returns for Indiana Wesleyan. And the Knights will send in Josie Trable. First time we've seen Josie today. 5'9 freshman out of East Central High School, St. Leon, in Indiana, down in southeastern Indiana. Trable. Collier, pass over the head to Gerard and out of bounds. That is the eighth Knights turnover. So I said earlier that Coach uh, Whaley's, you know, not getting a, a tremendous amount out of his, his full court pressure, but on the other hand, it is a two point ball game and they have forced nine turnovers, so they're disrupting them somewhat. Volkema backing in, almost stolen away. Yeah, kind of a lazy pass there, got lucky. Volkema cuts and gets Gerard off her feet to draw the foul. Gerard second, team second. Let's nice. take a look. Nice job again of just cutting to the basket. That's what she does well. Griffin and Merrill return. Look at, look at Taylor Fulcoma shooting these free throws. There's Ethan Whaley. First free throw good. Today's game brought to us by Triple A Roofing. When it rains, it pours. Trust the pros at Triple A Roofing. That's who we call. Special thanks to Triple A Roofing for their support of Marion Athletics. Second one in and out. So Fulcoma cannot tie the game. Brings the Wildcats to within one. 31-30. Myora Shova trying to get free from Merrill, picked up by Parker on the switch. Collier. And played by Fulkema on the switch is Myora Shova. Trable to Perryman, four to shoot, three to beat the clock, long off the back of the rim. Fulkema attacks, uses her size advantage, but the shot rolls off. Well, once again, she got what she wanted. That's what she loves to do. You've seen her do it three or four times already. Drive the lane and then scoop it up here at the last second. Just didn't go. Perryman, or Gerard rather, attacks. An offensive foul. That's the third foul on Gerard, and a sub was waiting at the table. McNally was waiting to sub in for Gerard, and Kennedy takes the third foul. And you see Steve Brooks with hands on his hips, not happy at all about that turn of events. Yeah, again, he's probably thinking, you know what, I had somebody at the table and just couldn't get him in, couldn't get the dead ball. And uh, again, unfortunately, a really good player is now straddled with her third foul and has to set at least two minutes of this half and then maybe more. Fulkema lays it in. Great delivery from the top. Bossy was playing on the front side and Fulkema flipped it in. Nine points for Fulkema and Indiana Wesleyan's back on top. McNally posting in a double. Threw it up, no good, but draws the foul. And McNally shoots two. That foul goes to Maddie Lawrence, her second and the team's fourth. 
Frazier, Nutley, and Jordan Reed return for Indiana Wesleyan. Abby McNally shoots two, 69% on the year. First one on the way and good. Today's game brought to us by Pepsi. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get in the game. Pepsi, proud partner of the Marion University Knights. Second free throw good as well. Knights back in front. Abby McNally becomes the second Knight into double figures, joining Ella Collier. 33-32. And Lily Frazier knocks in the three. Speaking of 32, 32 just drains the three there. Then again, if you're Coach Whaley and his staff, you got to be pleased right now. Hard to say that the fourth-ranked team in the nation is an underdog coming in, but they are, and you know what? This is right where you want to be. Frazier has 10 points in the quarter, 12 in the game. Perryman out of the double. Pass almost thrown away, but Myra Shova able to track it down. Shot clock running low. Perryman for three in the lead, short. One minute to go in the half. Reed ahead to Frazier. Knights in a scramble. Frazier picked up her dribble and, oh my. Got bailed out. Got bailed out. I think the Knights thought she may have traveled. Instead, it's a foul. Well, really no need to be in a real big hurry there. I was surprised that she was even thinking, you know, shot. You know, you're, you're up by a couple points. You got about 50 seconds to play. It's a big possession. You know, you use the whole shot clock and then just try to get a good shot. That was not a good shot, but she got bailed out. Well, today's game is brought to us by BSN. And thank you to BSN, preferred provider of apparel for Marion Knights Athletics. Frazier splits the pair, but that gives Mar uh, Indiana Wesleyan a three-point lead, biggest lead of the game for Wesleyan. Perryman misses the layup at the other end. I'd like to see this. Slow it down. You're, you don't need to be in a big hurry here. This is a relatively big possession. You really need a bucket. A little bit of a uh, statement bucket here if you can get it. Frazier drives, put it up, no, but drew the foul on Mayora Shova. That's the third on Mayora Shova. So two night starters, Kennedy Gerard and Mayora Shova, each with three fouls. Well, that's certainly another way that you can beat a team that you're not necessarily supposed to beat. Again, Wesleyan coming in here as a bit of an underdog here, uh, having lost the first game by a fairly wide margin, and now they're, they're doing exactly what they want. That will send Jayla Whaler into the game. The 5'5 senior out of Pittsburgh. Steve Brooks is giving Justin Jackson a little bit of a discussion. Frazier splits the pair. But the lead is four. Shot clock is off. Final 12 seconds of the half. Perryman finds McNally on the baseline. McNally got in deep. Foul on the baseline. Both teams over the limit. So McNally shoots two with five seconds to go. Foul on Frazier, her second. Well, if you're Coach Whaley, you'd like to have seen that not happen. Uh, you know, you'd like to see the last five seconds get off the clock and you know, your star player there uh, only ended up going in the second half with one, but unfortunately it's two. McNally, first free throw, no good. Second one good. 37-34. Jordan Reed in a hurry. All the way to the rim. Scoops it up, scoops it in. Jordan Reed coast to coast. What a quarter for Indiana Wesleyan as the Wildcats outscore the Knights 17 to 11 and in quarter number two. And what a time for her first bucket there. A nice job. As a result, the fourth-ranked Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats take a five-point advantage, 39-34, into the halftime intermission. Stay tuned. Halftime activities are next from the PE Center on the campus of Marion University. We're back in a moment. You're watching Marion Knights Basketball on the ISC Sports Network. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. 
It's been Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100 mile detours and a thousand likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Rob Brown, Jim Lees are back with you at the PE Center on the campus of Marion University. Indiana Wesleyan on the strength of a 17 to 11 advantage in the second quarter. Fourth ranked team in the country, Indiana Wesleyan, leading the second ranked Marion Knights. 39-34 here at the halftime break. Uh, before we dive deep into the details, Jim, uh, what are your impressions of that first half, what we saw in uh, the first 20 minutes? Well, you know, both these ball clubs average about 76 and, and, you know, 80 points a game. So, you know, they're, they're both kind of just below that defensive average there, I think, a little bit. Uh, so defensively, both teams playing fairly well, forcing a lot of turnovers more than you would expect. Both teams average, again, about 12 turnovers a game. I have Marion at nine already, so... Uh, credit the uh, Wildcat defense. Uh, you know, Lily Frazier, 17 points. She averages 19. Uh, I got it for 17. If you're going to win games that you're the underdog, maybe that you're not supposed to win, you got to do a couple things. One, you got to have somebody kind of go off. Somebody uh, play above their average. Right now, Lily Frazier's on a, on a pace to get, you know, 34 points. So that's well above her average. You also got to try to get the other team in foul trouble, and, and Indiana Wesleyan has done that as well with two really good players for uh, Marion in foul trouble. They're in a really good position with a five-point lead at halftime to steal this one. Well, we had uh, eight ties and five lead changes in that first half. Marion led 23-22 at the end of the first quarter. Marion's biggest lead in the first half. Marion had two seven-point leads in the first quarter. Indian Wesleyan's biggest lead is where we currently sit with this five-point advantage, 39 to 34. Mentioned Marion at the top. Marion won the opening matchup between these two programs back on January 20, 20th. That was up uh, in Marion, Indiana, home of Indiana Wesleyan, 73-54. But Marion comes in 17-0 in the conference. Indiana Wesleyan 16-1. We uh, presume that this could be the second of potentially three meetings. These two teams certainly on a collision course to meet a third time in the conference tournament next week, which begins on Tuesday night. But a lot of basketball left to be played. Certainly 20 more minutes here at the PE Center to sort out in this regular season finale. We're going to take our first break here on the halftime show. When we come back, we'll have more. We'll take a deeper dive into the stats. We'll have some halftime highlights as well. All that coming up as we continue. You're watching Marion Knights basketball here on the ISC Sports Network. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. 
Avoid the weight, cost, and drama of the ER. Orthoindy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. Well, here's the uh, Marion Knights football team being honored here at halftime for their accomplishments during the fall season. Certainly, I, uh, we're proud to feature them on the ISC Sports Network during the fall in our fall programming. And the track team as well. Also here on hand. Well, this past summer, Marion forward Kennedy Gerard and Marion assistant coach Lindsey Urban. There's uh, Kennedy. Competed against the best adult women's basketball players in Indiana at the City League. It has become a tradition for Marion and Indiana Wesleyan athletes. And uh, Coach Urba there wearing number 23 in the team picture right there in the middle. The City League uh, has become a tradition for Marion and Indiana Wesleyan athletes on both the men's and women's side to make their way to the City League after they are finished competing at the collegiate level. Players from both Marion and Indiana Wesleyan's Women's national championship teams have competed against each other in Indiana's top pro-am style women's league. Jenna Sullivan and Deja Cyrus from the Knights 2016 champions, as well as Jessica Brown, Taylor Goshert, and Carly Katra Lindman from Indiana Wesleyan's 2013 national championship squad have all found their way to the Boner Fitness and Learning Center on the near east side of Indianapolis. In the summer of 2023, 27 former NCAA Division I players Placed them up in the City League's women's division, the Queens of the Court. The TCL provides a fantastic platform for women's basketball and is a great place for current players competing at the NAIA level to hone their skills against high-level competition in the summertime. This summertime, City League will run from June 24th, August 8th, with games being played on the Wednesday and Thursday nights. Be sure to check out the City League this summer. We're going to take uh, another break. When we come back, we'll take a look at our first half highlights as Indiana Wesleyan leads Marion by five. You're watching Indiana High School Basketball, or Indiana High School Basketball, Marion University Basketball on the ISC Sports Network. always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, 
the well-being of the community you live in and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense. And investing in you makes good sense to us. There's something that may surprise you about Marion University. It's not our Catholic faith or our Franciscan values. It's not our 5,000 students or our diversity. It's not Marion's championship athletics or our Indianapolis location. It's that Marion is home to Indiana's only college of osteopathic medicine. Marion, Indy's Catholic University. Now let's take a look at some first half highlights in this top five battle of NAI women's basketball, the final day of the regular season. There's the heads up play by Izzy Reed, inbounding the ball off the back of Ella Collier. Sara Meyer Shoba hitting one of the three Marion Knights triples in the first half. And you mentioned, Rob, that twice uh, Marion has gone on a 7 0 run, and then both times uh, Indiana Wesley's did a really nice job of just clawing back. Ella Collier, one of uh, her two triples in this first half. Collier leads the Knights with 12 points. And what you saw there from those Marion highlights was just really good open looks. Just like we talked about, a good spacing, good ball movement. They were getting really, really good looks and hitting them. And then again, Wesley just would defense up, D up a little bit, create some turnovers, and go down and convert. That second quarter, Indiana C. Abby McNally, the other double figure score for Marion with 11 points in the first half. But Lily Frazier, the leading scorer in the Crossroads League, got hot in the second quarter, scored 12 of her 14 in the second quarter. Frazier leading all scorers with a game high 14. Yeah, she got so hot that I ended up giving her credit for an extra three that she didn't hit. That's I, hot. I think she'll get to 17 here <laughs> fairly quickly. She'll get those three back on your score sheet in short order. We'll take our final break here in the halftime show. When we come back, we'll take you up the start of the third. You're watching Marion Knights basketball on the ISC Sports Network. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100 mile detours and a thousand likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. You know, Indiana Wesleyan leads Marion University by five as we get set to start the second half. Second ranked Marion taking on fourth ranked Indiana Wesleyan alongside Jim Leisure. I'm Rob Brown. Happy you're spending part of your Saturday afternoon with us. Great crew working with us today. Vince Morellis, our director. Jordan Shue handling the graphics. Sean Walker, Rob Lynch, Eric Kinect, Carlos Alarcon IV, all handling the camera duties today. All-star crew working with us this afternoon. Several good crowd shots there. We've already talked about it. Really nice crowd here. I noticed uh, in, in prep for this, both these ball clubs played normally in front of about 250, 300 people. Uh, there's a little bit more that in here right well, now. Well north of that today, yeah, yeah. and they're still coming in. Men's game will follow. We'll have that game for you as well. About a 25-minute pause in between games. We'll sweep the floor and get the warm-up clock fired up. Well, if you're Coach Brooks, you tell your ladies, look, girls, we didn't play particularly well. Uh, we got a couple people in foul trouble. Uh, and, and really what I always told my kids are like, we're lucky we're only down by five. I mean, we could, this could be a lot worse. Don't, don't hang your heads. You know, we're, we're in this thing. 
And if you're Coach Whaley, you're just saying, nice job, you ladies. We're doing the game plan exactly as, as designed. We, we've had several weeks to kind of prepare for this 19-point defeat. We, we suffered earlier, early foul here on the floor. And a foul called seven seconds into the second half on Abby McNally. That's McNally's first. And the first on the Knights here in the third. Original starters on the floor for each team. Wildcats with the ball to start the second half. Frazier cut off on the baseline. Frazier picks up the ricochet. Ten to shoot. Entry pass kicked. Partial reset to 20. So already you're seeing a little bit of a, a defensive pickup here. The, the pressure from Marion. Uh, they're, they're coming out a lot more aggressively here. They've almost forced one turnover. Had the ball loose in the corner. Now, luckily for Indiana Wesleyan, they were able to retain it. But defensively, they're, they're, they're kind of forcing them out a little bit. Deep catch by Frazier against Mayora Shova and a foul on Mayora Shova. And that's four. Yeah, that's unfortunate because, again, you know, you got to tell your kids with three, Hey, you got to play smart. And you saw the replay there, how she's leaning forward. Uh, you know, she's entitled to the airspace above her, but not in front of her. First free throw rattles out for Frazier. You know, free throws are, are an issue, too. It, it, Wesleyan shot 73% in the first half. They're, as a team, 76. But, you know, Marion shot 88%. That might be a difference later in this game, too. Frazier hits the second. Frazier has missed three. He came in an 81 percenter, yeah. ninth in the league in free throw percentage. Well, that's where, again, if you're the trailing team, and in this case Marion is, that's where you can make some hay at that free throw line. So Aliyah Evans replaces Mayora Shova. And I have a feeling she's going to be sitting over there for a minute. With four fouls. Collier goes right to the basket and scores. Offensive foul, take it away. Steve Brooks is absolutely beside himself. Well, Steve may not like the call, but I tell you what, in real time, it looked like a pretty easy call to me. Uh, the young lady had set up there. I think that's Jordan Reed. It looks to me like she had position. And I think maybe what did it is Collier dips her left shoulder at the last minute. Which that's going to be called almost all the time. The third foul on Collier and already the third foul on the Knights, and we're yet less than a minute in to the third quarter. So if you're Indiana Wesley and you are able to get that fifth foul, you want to go to the line and make them pay. It becomes a parade to the yeah. free throw line at that point. But you got to hit them. Jordan Reed baseline jumper is short. And the rebound cleared by McNally for the Knights. Evans finds Collier on a great back cut and a score. Collier with 14. Nice little give and go. Second time that Evans has found Collier on a great play. First one was on a hit ahead off an offensive rebound, a defensive rebound and a breakaway. Frazier, another offensive rebound and put back score. Frazier with three field goals today off of offensive rebounds. Frazier with five offensive rebounds, three on the offensive glass. Turned all three of them into scores. Tie up on the deck. And a help ball will keep it at the Marion end. Timeout called by Marion. We'll keep it here. We'll keep it here. 8.02 to go, third quarter, and the Knights trailing by six. Today's game brought to us by Indiana Members Credit Union. Proud to support Marion University and now offering a Marion University Knights debit card. The card is included when you open a free IMCU checking account. Get your Marion University Knights debit card today and show your support. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online now at imcu.com. Well, you know, that whistle came from the wing official down here. And just as the ball, honestly, was getting loose, uh, he was tied up for just a second. The official underneath was still kind of waiting. He still wanted to make sure, you know, you got to make it be there. Uh, but the wing official thought it was there enough, but it was unfortunate because the ball did come loose. And uh, I think that uh, Wesleyan would have had a, a, a basket or a 
the ball there had it, it the play continued. Collier's elbow jumper is off left and rebounded by Frazier. Frazier's just a rebounding fool. Down the baseline, Frazier takes Perryman there, shot blocked by Bossy, and McNally ties up Frazier on the offensive, on the rebound attempt. The arrow will keep it at the Wesleyan end. So that saves the turnover, but boy, Frazier just playing hard. And nope. The arrow is dark for some reason. They just went possession. Yeah, I was going to say that the last tied up ball, they went possession Marion, so it's got to go the other way. Look to the scorer's table and the possession arrow yeah, it's is still dark. Not currently illuminated. There we go. Frazier takes the handoff down the lane. Runner's too strong. Frazier gets the rebound. Shot blocked by McNally. Out of bounds. Oh, you love the effort there, but again, she got that board and had an open player. All she had to do was kick it out. She tried to go back up with it. You're going to see, and it gets swatted away. The number two shot blocker in the Crossroads League is Abby McNally, averaging 1.2 a game. Jordan Reed turns and shoots, shot short. Good defense and a closeout of the possession by the rebound for Bossy. Call your navigating. Bossy did not have the passing angle to McNally, and the ball turned over. Pass out of bounds. 11th turnover of the game. Make that the 12th, rather, of the game by the Knights. Frazier. Gets it back, does Frazier. Backs Collier in. Turns, shoots, and scores. Billy Frazier, after a two-point first quarter, has 17 cents and 19 in the game. Aaliyah Evans, reverse layup. Evans took it all the way to the rim. Never stopped the ball. Well, and that's key. Somebody's got to stop the basketball. Evans jumped the passing lane and stole it. Now it's a foot race to the goal. Evans, reverse layup up and in. Oh, my, Aaliyah Evans. Nice time for her to get her first two buckets of the game. And the crowd's starting to get involved, imploring for some defense. Frazier played by McNally this time down. Folkema back to Frazier with eight. Pass deflected. Jordan Reed, one-legged jumper up and in. Oh, my. Yeah, I think she was really a little bit behind the board. Jordan Reed with an awkward looking shot that finds the bottom. Evans cut off. Perryman. Stripped on the way up. And Frazier's got it. Nutley spins on McNally. McNally blocked the shot and takes it away calmly as you like. Evans with the hit ahead to Perryman. Finds Collier trailing. Blocked by Fulkema and a foul called. Well, a really good job by Fulkema getting back defensively and trying to play a, a one on two. You know, she gets called for the hack because she swats down. But a really nice job of, of stopping the sure layup. You're going to see the nice pass here. And then she hustles over. And just the way that she swats down, they're going to call that. You know, you could say, ah, it looked like a lot of basketball there. She got a lot of basketball, yeah, but you got to call something when they're swatting like that. Yes, yeah, the swing down. You have seen, I think to your point, Jim, you've seen referees, though, have been much more generous about giving a defender the straight-up space. Absolutely. If they don't bring the arms down, if the shoulders stay square straight up. Yeah, I mean, the, the, when that really, I think, first became a thing, former pacer Roy Hibbert. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and, and the, the NBA, they had to literally make a ruling on it. And they said, no, the, the, the defensive player is entitled to the airspace above his or her head. And then that rule trickled all the way down to even the high school level. Uh, as long as you don't swat down or lean forward. Ball poked loose. Maddie Lawrence just into the game, able to get with it. But now the shot clock's drawing low. Collier in the passing lane. Knocks it free out of bounds, but just three to shoot. 
for the Wildcats. And Coach Brooks has got to be thrilled with the defensive intensity already in this second half. It seems like the basketball game has been played all the way out by the volleyball line on, on Indiana Wesleyan's side of the floor. Jordan Reed for three in the shot clock violation forced by the Knights. So the defense, you know, forces that turnover as well. But, you know, again, one of the things I've noticed too with Wesleyan is that their, their spacing is not good. More than once they've had three ladies within about an eight-foot area over there. you got to space it out. You know, when, when you've got three offensive players in, in about an eight- or ten-foot box, well, one person can defend all three of them. And the ball gets kicked away and pushed away. Knights trailing by four. Evans has sparked some action at this end since she entered the fray. Perryman, isoed against Parker, forced it into McNally. McNally gathers and scores. Well, she got the ball in a very difficult spot, but was able to keep her composure and basically step through and clear herself. Really nicely done. Now, see again, you got three black shirts and then there for a second. They were all within eight feet of each other. Izzy Reed on the wing. Now you got some spacing. Frazier. Evans poked it free. Frazier got it back. I don't think she knows it. Lawrence in the corner. Shot short, and it's another shot clock violation. Two straight. Forced by the Knights defense. Yeah, I'm a little surprised this Marion crowd isn't really appreciating this defensive effort more. You're hearing a smattering of applause. These people should be on their feet. They should be just ripping the roof off this place. This is great defense. And right now, you know, Wesleyan is just struggling to try to calm down, slow the game down. Now Lily Frazier and her 19 points have checked out. Claire Merrill is back in. Knights can tie with a hoop. Evans might have gotten away with a discontinued dribble there. Still has it alive. Look away past Bossy. Three for the lead. Got it. Now the crowd comes alive as the Knights are back in front. The 7 0 Marion burst. I'm going to call a little bit of a body there. But you know, anybody can get excited about offense. Come on, fans. <laughs> get excited about the defensive side, too. Perryman called for the foul on Merrill. Fourth foul on the Knights, first on Tamia. Jasmine Griffin shoots two. First one up and in. You know, Griffin came into the ball game a 57% shooter from the line. At least that's what I had. Yes. I got her three for three. Three out of three. You're going to hit them. Hit them when they mean something. 30-second timeout called by Ethan Whaley. Two free throws by Griffin that put the Wildcats back in front. There's Bossy's three. Good no-look pass there. Three really good looks at it. Great camera work. Today's game is brought to us by Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. If saving money is important to you, visit Tom O'Brien Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, a proud sponsor of Marion Athletics. Tom O'Brien is Indy's preferred Jeep dealer with two locations and the biggest Jeep inventory in Indiana. To show our support, Tom O'Brien will donate $200 to Marion for every car any student, parent, employee, or friend of Marion buys when you mention this promo. Go Knights and go to Tom O'Brien to see how our family works for you since 1933. First time out called by Indiana Wesleyan, each team with four remaining. It's Knights basketball for the 32nd time out. Marion with a 13-9 advantage here in the quarter. Trailing by one in the game. Dribble handoff to Collier. Picked up by Merrill on the switch. Collier, too much traffic, had it knocked free. Griffin, cross-court pass deflected out of bounds by Collier. Looking for Izzy Reed in the corner. Nice recovery there. Again, you turn the ball over on the other end. It's easy to sulk and kind of jog down. 
She hustles down, gets in the passing lane, and stops what would have been probably a pretty easy shot. Griffin for three, got it. And the freshman, Jasmine Griffin, has come in and dropped a quick five points. And it's back to a four-point Indiana Wesleyan lead. Perryman wants some action to come set a screen. Perryman attacks and scores. Put her on the line for the three-point play opportunity. Well, she was waiting on that ball screen, as you said, and finally said, you know what, I'll do it myself and just beat the defender off the dribble and finishes nice off the contact there. You see it on the left arm. Perryman took the freshman, Jasmine Griffin, all the way to the rim. Griffin takes the foul. Perryman completes the three-point play. Seven points for Perryman off the bench. Back to a one-point game. 2.25 to go, third quarter. You know, Lily Frazier still on the bench, but she's getting some much-needed rest. She's really been playing hard. And if Wesleyan can just get a hold here, just basically keep it within a point or two, that'll be a victory for Indiana Wesleyan because then their star player is going to come in well-rested. Izzy Reed for three, long. Rebound collected by Ella Collier. They're going to get her back up and get her at the scorer's table, but defensively you need a stop here if you're Wesleyan. Bossy back cut, but the pass errant out of bounds. All right, Coach Whaley says, all right, Lily, <laughs> you've rested enough. Get back in there for two minutes here. Jade Nutley also returned. There's Frazier. 19 points in the game to go with nine rebounds. Yeah, I think I might have let her just go ahead. And again, you're only down a point. You're, you're right in this thing. She has played her absolute heart out, and she's going to be a little tired late in this fourth quarter as we get there. But you know what? You need your best player on the floor, too. So, Bossy trailing Frazier to the rim. And Bossy got a nice, got a hand on the basketball to tie Frazier up on the way up. And Marion has it coming the other way. Evans takes it all the way, threw it over the rim. McNally's got the offensive rebound, too strong with it. And Folkema clears for the Wildcats. Ethan Whaley says, let's run something here. Yep, let's set it up. Tend to shoot, Frazier with it. Nutley, a three over McNally is no good. Rebound tapped out, scooped up by Frazier. Frazier lost her footing, but able to shovel it to Nutley. Ooh, Ooh Frazier was wide was, open yeah. in deep. Perryman, a nice recover. Perryman tied Frazier up on the way up, and the arrow favors Marion. What a defensive play by Perryman. Yeah, as it was, I mean, that would have been a live ball, you know, block shot going the other way, but they get the basketball either way, so, but a really good defense. Knights trail by one. Shot clock about seven seconds ahead of the game clock as the third quarter winds down. Perryman through the lane, scoop shot up and in. It took a lap around and fell, and the Knights are back on top. Crowd on their feet as the third quarter winds down. Nutley to the baseline. Fall away shot short. Folkema though right there to grab the rebound as it fell into her lap for the putback. So the Knights outscore the Wildcats 18-14 in the period. But the Wildcats take a one point lead into the final 10 minutes. It should be an exciting 10 to close it out. We'll have it on the other side as you're watching Marion Knights basketball on the ISE Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Pepsi's always had 
with great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now eight lead changes, nine ties in this one through three quarters. And it's a head scratcher how this one's gonna turn out. 53-52. Indiana Wesleyan leads by one. Rob Brown, Jim Leisure with you. Ella Collier leading the Knights with 16 points. Lily Frazier leads all scorers. Facing the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats with 19. Well, just the way, Rob, that you would want this game to be, you know, number two, number four. Uh, it was a 19-point game last time. Obviously, probably got away from the Wildcats a little bit late. But they have clawed all day here, and this has turned into a great game. Indiana Wesleyan with the ball to start the final quarter. Wesleyan has led by as much as eight in that third before the Knights came back to grab a couple short leads. Nutley into a double team, tied up on the way up. Lost it on the way up again. It's Knights basketball. Ethan Whaley can't believe there was not a block shot or a deflection that would give uh, Wesleyan at least a chance here. Yeah, there was, there was a, it's hard to see there real quickly wh whether or not who got it last, but there was some Marion contact with the basketball. And McNally scores at the other end while Wesleyan is still trying to sort out what unfolded on that possession. And McNally gives the Knights the lead back. Yeah, you got to let that one go. You know what? It didn't go your way, but give it up. And an offensive foul. Offensive foul called. I was going to say, Rob, they're going to need you to go down there and get that ball out of there, jump up here and get it off. Oh, wait a minute. I thought you were heading down that way. I was heading down that way to go get it, yeah. Yeah, they still haven't got it out of there. As it stands, my green pen is dead. <laughs> so I had to go fetch another green pen. <laughs> Reed said, here, let me do it. And then she didn't do it either. There we go. And it goes. Foul called on Nutley. Knights with the ball and a one-point lead. Collier, Merrill gambled, giving Collier a little space. Now Bossy an open three. Too strong. McNally, though, runs down the loose ball. Scramble with Frazier and a great hustle play by Frazier to go to the deck and tap it to Nutley. Well, no, no surprise there. She's been all over the floor today. Knights hustling back, though, to stop the breakout. Jordan Reed driving, spinning, missed it off the board. Rebounded by Evans. You know, the good spacing leads to so much. Not only does it lead to, like, open threes every now and then as a foul on the floor, but it also opens up those driving lanes for those, those, those ladies that like to drive. And those are things that coaches spend a lot of time in film is freeze, freeze. Look, look at the spacing here. It's either really good or it's really bad. And that's what you teach. That's what you coach up. Foul goes to Claire Merrill, her second, team second. Perryman fires it in to McNally who scores. What a pass by Perryman. And McNally has 17. McNally leading the scoring for the Knights today. Collier jumped the passing lane. Now it's a foot race to the goal. Collier left hand finish up and in. Steve Brooks is fired up because his defense is creating offense and his team's up five. Yeah, night and day defensively, I think, from this first half to second half. And Coach Fraley wants, wants to talk about it here. Let's see if it's going to be a, it's a full. It is a full. We'll keep it here. Timeout, Indiana Wesleyan. Defense is the difference, really, for, for Marion in this second half. Take a look at Ella Collier getting in the passing lane. I like this finish with, with the left hand, too. You're able to kind of 
keep the defender off away from you with the right hand, finish with the left hand. Nice job. So the Knights begin the quarter on a 6-0 burst to lead by five. Today's game brought to us by first on-site, formerly more restoration. Here to help power you through whatever comes your way from fire and flood to catastrophic storms or biohazards. They have the team technology and resources to help you restore, rebuild, and rise. Go Knights. 7.32 to go in this one. And the Knights lead by five. You know, fans of all ages, Rob, here. Looks like a shot of the football, some of the football players here, and then a young Marion Knight fan. Well, be sure to stay tuned after about a 25-minute warm-up. Regroup between games. We'll have the men's game on the other side. It's going to be hard pressed to be better than this one. <laughs> it's going to be hard to top. <laughs> we'll do our best. We'll be happy to bring you that one as well. Sixth ranked Indiana Wesleyan men's team taking on the 21 and 6 Marion men's team that has won seven straight. Second and fourth place teams in the men's standings, respectively. Frazier to the baseline as play resumes. Got in the air, but able to pass it over to Merrill. Lawrence down the baseline, hand checked and fouled en route by McNally. Abby's second foul, first on the Knights here in the period. Partial reset on the shot clock, 20. Lawrence, oh, finds a cutting Frazier who's wide open to get to the goal and lay it in. Now some of the Marion fans were hollering for a five second call and just at the last second, Frazier broke free. Collier got down the baseline to find Bossy. Bossy turns the corner, tried to bounce it into McNally, but the pass anticipated and stolen by Frazier. Frazier with, has her 15th 20-point game of the season. 21 points on the afternoon. Lawrence takes McNally into the lane, flips it high off the board and in. Maddie Lawrence with five off the bench. Five straight points by the Wildcats and the lead down to one. And McNally had to be just a little bit careful there not to pick up another foul. And that just opened the door for the drive. Perryman. Stepping through the double. Over to Collier. Steve Brooks wants time and gets it. 30 second timeout will stay here. 6-11 to go and Marion up a point. Now, Marion Ath University Athletics is excited to launch their new strategic fundraising campaign to enhance the student athlete experience across campus. Because of the generosity of several Marion donors, all new gifts or pledges between September 1st through April of 2024 to athletic scholarship funds and the facility enhancement funds will be matched up to $1 million. To make your gift to support these efforts, please visit marion.edu slash journey to 2030. Additional information can be found on munites.com. Fifty-eight, fifty-seven, six, eleven to go. Marion up a point, trying to complete what would be just the second undefeated conference season in program history. McNally, ball swung to Collier. And what's the call, Tim Cartwright? He's got a hand check foul on Collier's drive. Fulcoma's foul, her second. Team third. Partial shot clock reset for the Knights. McNally slipped the screen, missed the shot, but Bossy fouled on the rebound attempt. 
a rebound grab, I should say. Yeah, Matty Lawrence there, just a little bit of, of uh, out of control player displacement there. The contact forced uh, the, the, the player to move. Pretty simple call. That's already the 14th foul, though, on Indiana Wesley. Perryman and a great cut to the bucket off the inbound and lays it in off the great find by Evans. And you mentioned that that fourth foul. The fifth one is you know, obviously double bonus for Marion where they, again, they, they shot 88% from the line first half. Frazier foul line jumper good. Lily Frazier with 23 points. Back to a one point game. Evans who has a team high five assists off the bench. Perryman. Collier was waiting for it on the swing. Evans in deep to McNally. Now Perryman, six to shoot Bossy. And a rush the shot, but McNally was held trying to get to an offensive rebound position. And that's the 15 foul. McNally shoots two. And the Knights in the bonus the rest of the way for the final 5-11. That could be a huge factor yeah, five down minutes, the stretch. Five minutes is a long time. And then if you're if you're Marion, you just want to be aggressive. You want to drive to the basket because they really can't afford to foul you. So 5-11 of bonus time for Marion to close out this game. Fourth foul on Maddie Lawrence. Abby McNally hits the first free throw. Second one on the way and good. So Abby McNally with 19 points to pace the Knights. Another Back one. to a three-point lead. Another young lady well above her average here. She averaged about 13. Shot missed and nice block out by Perryman. Now be aggressive. Drive to the basket. I and mean, they can't stop you. If they stop you, yep. you don't want to be that aggressive. But Mer if they stop you, then they're going to foul you or they're going to let you score. Merrill with the steal. Perryman threw it away in traffic. Frazier, ISOed left side against Collier. And Collier may have gotten hit in the mouth. Let's see here. Tim Cartwright gathering his partners together. I'm going to ask for some help here again just to see, I think, kind of what you said. You know, was it a, a blow to the face or was it just, you know. Well, and we got the indication our broadcast position is across the floor from the scores table and the benches. And because we have... Uh, because of the television in today's game, we do have replay capabilities, so. They're gonna look at it. They're going to uh, take a look at it. It's good officiating. You know what, you, I, I'm sure he thinks he knows what he saw, right? Uh, but then he's gonna ask for some help. So we're going to I don't Looking think. specifically at the contact between. That elbow right there. I, Maddie Lawrence and Ella Collier. And they're running the uh, they're running our camera feed as we take a look the replay from the truck. Yeah, the, I mean, and again, I don't think there was any malintent. It was just a, a basketball play where she's trying to clear some space. Yeah, trying to pivot away. Yeah, and uh, but irregardless, she did kind of elbow her right in the face. So now uh, our. Three-man crew will huddle up near midcourt and decide how they want to adjudicate this. El Collier still trying to maybe blink away a little bit of that sting. All-time leading scorer in Marion women's basketball history. There's our crew. Tim Cartwright on the right. Ryan Kent Jr. holding the basketball. And Justin Jackson, our three-man crew in the first of two games today here at the PE Center. 4.32 to go in this three-point game, pitting the number two and fourth ranked teams. You see in the graphic on your screen, now Tim Cartwright bringing the two head coaches together to explain the decision, and you'll be able to tell from the body language <laughs> how this is going to go. Yeah, somebody's going to go away upset, and somebody's going to go away thinking, yep, that's exactly what it should be. Well, I read Steve Brooks's lips on the left, the Marion head coach, and he said okay. Yeah, he's like, okay. 
Ethan Whaley is having a little bit longer of discussion. He shook his head no. So they have called the foul on Maddie Lawrence. That is her fifth foul. So Which that's a reasonable call. I mean, it wasn't anything malicious and all that stuff. So Lawrence is fouled out of the game, but it was not a flagrant, so right. no free throws or any of that sort of nature. But the Knights do have the basketball, and then the Knights turn it over as Evans throws a second straight steal for Merrill for the Wildcats. Volkema down the baseline. Pass in deep to Nutley. Turning, shooting, missed it short. But an offensive rebound keeps it alive, and Bossy stuck a hand in, commits the foul. Second foul on Allison Bossy, second on the Knights here in the quarter. 4.06 to go. Tried, it Tried to pass off the back again, and this time it did not work. Ella Collier was ready for it, and Merrill fouls Ella Collier, which if you're going to foul somebody, fouling the leading free throw shooter in the nation is probably not advisable. Especially not 96 feet from the bucket. <laughs> also not advisable. <laughs> I mean, maybe she was going to chuck one up there from 96 feet. I doubt it. And I, we talked about that earlier defensively. You know, you, you want to face, you know, the player that you're, you're, you're guarding, but you also out of the corner of your eye got to see the basketball, and that's what she did that time. That was the difference. Ella Collier shooting two. First one up and in. Collier seeking her 13th 20-point game of the season in this game number 28, and she got it. Back to a five-point Marion lead. Big-time possession here. You know, I mean, if you're Wesley, you got to at least cut into it a little bit. Nutley dribbled into what looked like may have been a tie-up. Instead, it's an Allison Bossy foul. Third foul on Bossy. Third on the Knights. Yeah, another one of those where she might have gotten bailed out of here a little bit because that looked like a tied-up ball to me. Folkema working topside. Had it knocked free and a foul call. Folkema now gets tangled up with McNally. Perryman got involved as well. Now, I think Perriman was trying to be a peacemaker there. Now, I would like to see her go to her player. Go, go get your player out of it. Don't push the opposing player. That's where things escalate. A good idea, I think, for maybe the referees to. There's the foul, and there's that tie-up, and then she kind of shoves Falcom in there. I, I would have liked to see her going the other way. So Bossy called for her fourth foul and the team's fourth. And that's all the further we go. Merrill for three, got it. That's a big shot. Yep, cut into it by three, baby, two-point game. Claire Merrill's first points of the game come at a huge time for Indiana Wesleyan. Collier for three. That one just nicked the front of the rim if it hit iron at all. Frazier searching. Gives to Jordan Reed, leaning, drew the foul on Perryman, did Reed. Second foul on Perryman, Reed fouled in the act. Both teams in the bonus the rest of the way. I like Reed's aggressiveness there. Again, go to the, go to the rim. In this case, she got fouled in a shooting foul, so it was gonna get two either way. First one up and in for Jordan Reed. The senior out of New Pal. All defensive team. Crossroads League selection last year. All league second team player as well. Splits the pair. So the Knights clinging to a one point lead as we hit the three minute mark to go in this ball game. Collier picked up by Nutley on a switch down the baseline. Got in too deep. Missed the shot. Bodies all over the deck. Knights late getting back. As a result, Reed through the lane, put it up too strong. Rebound tapped and scooped up by Frazier. Who else? Finds Nutley down the baseline, and Nutley's reverse gives Wesley in the lead. Frazier's offensive rebound kept that possession alive. Two 
20 to get five to go. Perryman. All the way to the goal, put it up and in. What a shot by Tamia Perryman. Timeout Marion. My, oh my. Tamia Perryman with 13 points. We'll keep it here. 2.16 to go. My goodness. Very nice job there. You saw that determination in her eyes as she drove right into your living room there. Good finish. Kind of opposite hand. She finished with the right hand on the left side, but it worked. 12 lead changes in the game. And Marion up one with 2.16 to go. Today's game brought to us by MU Athletics. Get all of the up-to-the-minute information on Knights Athletics at MUKnights.com and follow them on Twitter at, at MU Knights. That's at MU Knights. Well, good crowd continuing to file in here at the PE Center, west side of Indianapolis on the campus of Marion University. Tamia Perryman with 13 points off the bench, one of three Knights in double figures. Ella Collier leading Marion with 20 points. Billy Frazier has 23 points and 13 rebounds to pace Indiana Wesleyan. Both teams over the foul limit. Frazier, deep catch, put it up off the bottom of the rim though against the defense of Perryman and Bossy. Here comes Perryman. Circles it back to the corner. Collier, doubled, had it knocked free by Frazier. Perryman knocked it again, knocked it loose. And then McNally and Frazier collide. Foul called on Frazier in the scramble. Now just getting a little bit sloppy there really on both sides. Uh, and it results in the foul at midcourt. That puts Abby McNally at the line for two. First one, no good. Abby's second miss from the line. Five out of seven today. Second one also no good. So the Knights come up empty. From the line. Coach Whaley wants a specific set here. He's going to get them lined up. Inside 100 seconds to go. Spacing's good. Jayla Wainer into the game, playing the basketball out front. Right side for three is no good. Rebounded by Perryman. Spacing was good. They got a good shot. Didn't go. Good rebound. Good Wainer. job of blocking out. Wainer had to get it across and just barely beat the 10-second count. One minute. One minute remaining. Collier down the baseline. In trouble in the double team. Steve Brooks got a timeout. Yeah, called the timeout to save the possession there because she had gotten under the basket behind the, the, the glass and was really in no man's land. So Steve Brooks calls time. We'll keep it here with 55 and 110 seconds to go. Marion calling one of its two remaining timeouts. Well, joining the M Club is the absolute best way to support the student athletes at Marion University. For more information, visit marion.edu slash mclub. That's marion.edu slash mclub. Three members of the Marion men's team senior class will be honored before the men's game here in about 20 minutes or so. Nine to shoot for the Knights on the other side of this timeout. Marion leading by one. 55 and 110 second to go. What a game we've had for you this afternoon. First of two. Men's half of this doubleheader to follow. About 25 minutes following the conclusion of this one. Oh, I said it earlier, Rob, you know, this is what you want a number four and a number two uh, ranked game to be. You'd want it to come down to the last possession. 
they don't always uh, go that way. Obviously, again, the earlier one was a 19-point game. So credit to both coaching staffs, Coach Haight, uh, Whaley especially in his group. They were able to find 18 points somewhere and make this a one-point game. Evans finds McNally on the cut, but she got in too deep. Nutley got a piece of it, I think, as well. And Ethan Whaley wants time. So the Wildcats get the stop they were looking for. And a full timeout called. We'll keep it here. 48 and 6 10 seconds to go. Now this is where you as coaches and you see Coach Whaley and his staff are out on the floor. They're not, you know, talking to the girls yet, but they're basically saying, all right, what has worked for us in the past? They're talking about, you know, the Goshen game or whatever game it was and what they can do here to try to replicate it and get a good look. They made their decision and he's going to go over and tell the ladies what it is. 48 and 6 tenths. Both teams are over the foul limit. Possession arrow favors the Knights. Indiana Wesleyan has two timeouts remaining. And that's stuff that Coach Brooks is telling his kids. Look, possession arrow favors us, so if we can tie it up, get on the floor, tie it up. If you get an opportunity, do it. We'll get the basketball. Indiana Wesleyan has two timeouts remaining, so if the Wildcats find themselves in a situation where they can't get the basketball in, certainly Ethan Whaley is telling his team, don't, don't make a bad pass. Right, don't tie yourself up. Don't, don't put, get us the basketball behind the glass or in a spot where you know we're going to be forced to either make a bad pass or, or basically eat it, and if we do, we're going to lose it. So, Folkema, Jordan Reed, Merrill Frazier, who has a game high 23 points and 14 rebounds, and Nutley break the huddle for the Wildcats. Abby McNally, Collier, Jayla Wainers back in for the Knights. Bossy and Perryman are the five on the floor for Marion. Here we go. Frazier working off a screen. Had it poked free by McNally, and the Knights have the steal. Well, they can take it down to about five or six seconds before they have to shoot it. Shot clock seven ticks ahead of the game clock. Marion a one-point lead. Perryman handles top side. Steve Brooks wants a clear out. Yep. Wants the floor spread for Perryman. Elbow jumper, Perryman off the front of the rim, and Merrill wrestles it away. Timeout called. Timeout immediately called by Ethan Whaley. Full timeout. We'll stay here. Seven. 30 second timeout. Really Either good. way, we'll stay here. Really good officiating there because, because the official under the bucket immediately shot his eyes over and saw Coach Whaley, you know, signaling for the timeout. I was thinking it might have been a foul call because there was a little bit of contact underneath, but his eyes were at the bench. He knows what this, that young man understands the game. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Kent Jr., the baseline official, was right there. And he knew possession, coach, right? And he saw Coach uh, Whaley and then. You know, his eyes were going to quickly come back to the action, but he had to at least shoot his eyes over and look. So here we go. Seven and a half seconds to go. It's a one-point Marion lead, mindful of the fact that both teams are over the foul limit. So if Marion commits a foul here, it's two shots. Yeah, and then the question is, do you pressure the basketball? Of course, it comes up to the half court. Uh, you know, do you try to force it back over the 10-second line? You know, force them to... Uh, Inbound it back there. So final seven and a half seconds. Number two versus number four. Knights looking for one stop. Perryman jumps the passing lane. To the goal, lays it in. Three point lead. You know, Time they, out. They had a player wide open at the 10 second line. All she had to do was she could have rolled it into her to inbounds the ball. They were obviously looking for a specific player and one player only because they had a young lady standing in the circle wide open. Would have been an easy inbounds Let's right here. Let's take a look at this again. Tamia Perryman jumps the passing lane and goes coast to coast to lay it in. Taylor Folkman was just standing wide open. All they had to do was get it to her. 
So now, though, this game is not over. Let me, well, let me emphasize that. Indiana Wesleyan had a timeout left. Yeah. It's a three-point game, and in women's college basketball, you can advance the ball to half court sure. no, you with got a timeout. Seconds, yeah. So a three-point shot ties the game, and the three-point shooters are on the floor for Indiana Wesleyan. Izzy Reed has a three-pointer in the game. She is checked in. Now, Izzy is, is, is in the position that Volcom was earlier. I mean, all you got to do is just fake the ball toward the baseline and then throw it out here, and you, you had somebody wide open. Now, Volcom was actually closer. She was on that half of the court. Reed against Collier. Three to tie, wide right, and that'll do it. The Knights have won. And for just the second time in program history, Marion completes a perfect conference season. The Knights run the table in the Crossroads League, finishing the year 18 up and none down. 25 wins in a row for the Marion Knights as the Knights head into the Crossroads League Conference Tournament next week with a 27 and one record. Final here at the PE Center, the Marion Knights 68, Indiana Wesley in 65, what a game, Jim. Fantastic game and again, hats off to Coach Whaley and his staff. I tell you, they did all they could. They got hammered by 19 earlier in the year and uh, they were able to bring it back to a last second shot as both teams are gonna get together here at midcourt, great sportsmanship, uh, you know, just get great fellowship as well. Marion comes back to outscore Indiana Wesleyan in the second half, 34 to 26. Knights with three in double figures. Ella Collier leading the way with 20 points. Abby McNally with 19 points and 10 rebounds. Tamia Perryman with 15 points, including the big steal in the final seven seconds to help seal the game. Lily Frazier leading all scorers with a huge game, 23 points and 14 rebounds to pace Indiana Wesley. But you see the victorious Knights, first time since 2021, only three years ago, but only the second time in program history that the Knights finish a conference season undefeated. That 2021 team went 16-0 in conference play. This year's group goes 18-0. Not much more you can do than beat everybody on your schedule. <laughs> That's all you can do. It's the best you can do. Well, what a game we had for you today. The Knights win by three. 12 lead changes, nine ties. And the Knights win. Keep in mind, we'll have another game for you here in about 25 minutes, but we'll wrap this one as the Knights finish the regular season 27-1 with a 25-game winning streak. I want to thank our great crew working with us. Vince Morales, our director. Jordan Chu on the replay. Sean Walker, Rob Lynch, Eric Connect, Carlos Alcaron, the fourth on the cameras. For our great crew, I'm Rob Brown. From the PE Center, the Knights win 68-65. So long, everybody. At Indiana Members Credit Union, we're invested in more than just your finances. We're invested in your future, the future of your family, the well-being of the community you live in, and in those who dream big. Until those dreams become a reality, any bank can give you a loan or open an account. At IMCU, we care about more than just dollars and cents. We care about doing things that make sense, and investing in you makes good sense to us. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith based